that's uh, we've talked about the GUI interface. Okay, so now that you've seen the command line, we may use it in our debugging. You may can direct me to the parameter viewer if you want to do that as well. So I'm going to go to examples debugging and I'm going to run step one or attempt to run step one. Um, so I get a bunch of warnings. Uh, I'm not going to start at the bottom warning. Let's go to the top warning. Uh, so this right here, this is this is a warning that's a result of I'm using the binary and um, I I don't have the path set up quite well for all of the Apple system libraries um, because I've stripped things down so it, things don't interfere with my version of Pyleth installed. Um, so let's ignore we'll ignore that for all of these. Don't worry about that. Um, and so let's start with the very first. So the very first thing we see is that. There is a default value, my, my time-dependent BC Dirichlet boundary condition label is not being set. So label for a, the group <laughs> node set in the match is not specified. The next thing I see at step 01.cfg line 59 is I get a warning that unknown component pilot app dot time dependent dot BC dot X underscore pause x that component is unknown so whoops i didn't mean to uh so we should probably look at start by where we have the first most definite information of something going wrong in a particular location is step 01.cfg line 59. So I will jump to line 59. So here, here, this is actually the line 59 is the BC degree of freedom. So it's trying to set a, the BC DOF um, for this component. Anybody see something wrong with what we might be doing here? Okay. Very good. So up here, we have X pause. Down here, we've made a typo. And uh, instead of referring to X pause, we refer to X pause X. So let's fix that. And now let's try again. Surprise, surprise, there's another problem. Um, OK, we went a little farther. We're down to line 99, and we are now trying to set the file name to output slash step01.vtk uh, for uh, this component. <coughs> or, well, for this com, whoops, don't do that. Ah. We'll do that again. Um, so this is the name of the component. That's the property I'm trying to set. So let's go to line 99. Anybody notice anything wrong here? Writer. So it's not right. The name of the component is writer, as you see in these next lines. So. Okay, two bugs fixed or typos fixed. Let's keep going. It does. And uh, if it's not working on your machine, uh, it's under Darwin, it may be because I, it should be, there's a new tarball on the GitHub site that I uploaded right before this that fixes that issue. Um, and, uh, but you'll so, uh, but we we're not quite there yet. Um, so here, now I have not just a warning; I have a more complicated error message. So um, let's start at the top. Uh, so it aborted the pilot application. Now it has gotten down into Python. When Python gets an exception, uh, it gives me the stack of where it was. 
So um, I was in I was in a Petsy application, which was in the pilot application, which was in my time dependent problem, um, implicit time stepping in the formula, more general formulation within elasticity implicit. Then it called the swig binding to the FE assemble, which then jumped down to C++ and gen I have the results of a uh, C++ exception that is, the error message here is all of this. Error occurred while reading spatial database file mat_elastic.spatialdb. Spatial distribution with data mention of zero cannot have more than one point. Found three points in distribution. So let's look at mat_elastic.spatialdb. And it was, I think believe it was gave number locations three when I only have one point. So if we have one point, how many locations should we have? One. So if I had two points down there, then I would become suspicious of uh, uh, what might be happening. Um, but the fact that I only have one point out there makes me want to make sure my header matches. So let's try again. Yet another error message. Okay, we are still having problems with matelastic.spatialdb. And the error message is number of dimensions in coordinates of spatial distribution two does not match number of dimensions in coordinate system. So the number of dimensions in spatial coordinates two. So I have given Told the told pilot that the spatial database has a space dimension of two, but down here my coordinate system is in three dimensions. And you'll notice down here I gave it an X, Y, and Z. Well, this happens to be a 3D problem, so I better make sure my spatial dimension is actually three to match my coordinate system. So let's try again. Lo and behold, another error. Um, okay, we're in the application, we're in time dependent implicit formulation. Now we're down into jumping through the swig for the boundary condition. And it says, found overly constrained point while setting up constraints for Dirichlet boundary condition face Z negative. Number of degrees in freedom at point 503 is three, and the number of attempted constraints is four. So if I have four constraints, for a displacement in 3D space, I know something is wrong with my uh, displacement boundary conditions. So let's look at, uh, so here are all my displacement boundary conditions. Um, and so anybody see anything suspicious here? So none of these individual boundary conditions have more than two constraints. Where might boundary conditions overlap and combine multiple of these constraints to get four constraints? What happens on edges where two boundaries come together? We apply the constraints for this boundary and we apply the constraints for that boundary. What about at a corner? At a corner, I might have the constraints for one side, the other side, as well as the bottom. How might I end up getting four constraints out of these boundary conditions? Okay, let me give you another hint. On the X positive face, I've constrained X. And the X negative face, I've constrained X. On the Y positive constraint, 
on the y positive face, I've constrained x and z. What? Yeah? Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. On x, so I, I was, I misspoke. X, on the x positive and x negative faces, I'm constraining y. On the y positive and y negative faces, I'm constraining x and z. And on the bottom, I'm constraining z. What about what would happen if my y face shares a vertex with my bottom face? I'm trying to, const I have constraining, if my y positive face is constraining z and my bottom is constraining z, where those two boundary conditions overlap along that edge, I'm constraining the z degree of freedom twice. That's not allowed. I can't constrain it with, you know, multiple values. So I'm going to guess correctly that <laughs> because on the x positive and x negative faces I'm constraining y, it makes sense that on the y positive and negative faces I'm constraining x. I have a feeling I'm doing some a sh a shear displacement boundary condition here. Um, and then on the bottom I constrain z. So not everything is, you know, not every single error message is a typo. Sometimes um, it's sort of the overall setup. So, my simulation appears to have run. Output directory has written VTK files. So, let's look and see what our simulation looks, what the results look like. So here I'm just gonna, there's no Python Prairie View file, so I have to um, navigate to it from debugging. Oh, whoops. Helps if I actually go to the right pilot directory. So hopefully we should be back recording again. Okay, let's do dis show displacement. Instead of magnitude, let's show X. And you'll notice if I show Y, it flips. I can put on the glyph vectors by also, let's see, scale them by a factor of 4,000. And I think they're white <laughs> on white. That doesn't work very well. Let's show them in black. Nope. Uh, I think, let's see, the other, instead of uniform distribution, all points. There we go. So there you can sort of, you can see the, the direction of the deformation. Not, they're not scaled. So where's my scale mode vector? There we go. I knew something was wrong because when I zoomed in on my point where I expected zero deformation, I could see a vector. And so it was showing just the direction of a very, very small vector. And now you can see that, um, you know, you can, you can see the linear dependence in the 
X displacement along the Y face as well as the Y displacement. Um, and so you can see I have a pure shear, my corners, no depth variation as a function of Z. Um, so step one now works correctly. We fixed all of our uh, issues. Um, so on to step two. Um, so let's see. So on the slides, if you follow along on the slides, um, 